when you look at near-death experiences, people talk about going into the light. Does the light leave the body? And if so, is that the energy structure of the body that before the brain and the body decays to a point that it can't be resuscitated, is still communicating with the body via like bio-entanglement, for lack of a better word? Is that something that is a really real experience that could one day be measured by science, but also point to the validity of the intuitive truth of certain uh, wisdom, traditions, or religions? Uh, first of all, in the, in the word itself, near death. They're not dead, they're near dead. There's a very big difference there. Uh, and, and you can replicate these in the lab. You can put on Michael Persinger's God helmet that bombards the temporal lobes with electromagnetic fields, and people have out-of-body near-death experiences right there in his room. You can do it through uh, oxygen deprivation by accelerating people uh, in a, a centrifuge. These are pilots. Uh, over half of them, uh, when they accelerate up to where they pass out, they have out-of-body near-death experiences. They see the light, the light at the end of the tunnel. They go through the tunnel and so on. You can, you can see the videotape. They're just sitting there drooling. They're, they're out. <laughs> um, and, of course, you can do this through uh, sleep deprivation, through extreme environments, Arctic climbers, uh, Arctic explorers, mountain climbers, sol uh, solo sailors have these kinds of out-of-body, near-death, sense-presence experiences uh, under extreme environment, environmental conditions. So th th those three lines of evidence tell us it's in the brain, not outside of it.